I would say that I know very little about the study, the work of cults in real values. Compared to a person who has spent considerable time studying the matter, I would be a complete amateur. There are many out there who are well informed on this matter and they present a very good case for their view. And I've got to admire some of those people who dedicate their, say, academic life to that study. As I say, I am not an expert, although I have seen a certain amount as far as cult-like practices, or practices that could be considered to be cult-like in some way, shape or form, whether that's in politics or mainstream religion, or not so mainstream religion for that matter. Spirituality, organised groups, using practices they don't fully understand. Yet very often, usually about once a month or so, considering my circle of friends, on social media I will come across a story regarding a group I've never even heard of, and it turns out they have a great many followers. Very often it's a, a cult over in Asia, very often India with a guru or some other teacher or pseudo-Buddha somewhere else in the same part of the world. And yes, it comes as a surprise because, believe it or not, I do not know all the cults in the world. And nor do you. And nor does probably the greatest expert out there. Nor would uh, one of my favourite, um, I suppose, what you could describe as an author and cult expert, and expert in New Age practices as well, um, Rick Ross. Rick Ross, not the rapper, but the um, person who's an expert on uh, cults. Uh, he's written at length about this uh, subject matter, writes articles, and uh, those appear on cultnews.com. And the... Uh, yeah, the cult, what's it, the cult educational institute, I think it's called. Oh, I forget the damn name. But in any case, quite interesting, there are many other people who study this, you know, kind of thing as well. But some of the cults mentioned by some of the experts out there, and some of the issues, some of the key points regarding cults, uh, are very often raised by people like uh, Robert J. Lifton. Well, they are quite amazing, and, and it helps me to think about these things differently, rather than jumping to conclusions. You know, if you call the Jehovah's Witnesses a cult, I can point to probably a hundred of a cults which are easily found just by a simple Google search, which are far, far worse. If you think that they're the worst in Christianity, I could point to many which are far, far worse. If you think the worst in terms of the kind of, um, what do you call it, like restorationist or, or revival, uh, you know, Christian sects which appeared in the late 19th and early 20th century, I, I would say there are worse out there. There are worse out there. Very much like the bias that many Christians have against Mormons is also, uh, well, a little bit ridiculous and heavily biased as well, as you'd imagine. Or for that matter, uh, with um, Muslims versus Hindus, or uh, Jews versus Muslims, or whatever the case may be, when those cases do arise from certain key uh, specific individuals, it's worth pointing out where there is a bias, and in fact there are worse things out there. There are far worse things out there. In most cases, the, uh, the groups you could mention aren't necessarily as bad as you may well think. Scientology, in the grand scale of things, is a cult of greed, but it's not killing uh, over 900 people in Guyana, in Jonestown, as with the People's Temple and uh, Jim Jones. So, yes, there are good reasons to always think there's more to learn and that you may well know a great amount of things, even if you are person versed in that area of thought, but you're probably not the greatest expert there is, and I would certainly say there probably is no absolute expert, and that includes uh, many of the fields as well, where you end up with the world expert, a documentary will proclaim. And it's like, well, that person is still fallible, they're still a human being, and many of the issues regarding a subject matter, whether it's the matter of cults or, say, cult leaders or whatever the case may be, is still open up to a, uh, I would say, quite a hopeful, uh, healthy debate. Because there has to be hope where there is indeed uh, still the ability to change, to progress, to learn more and to really uh, understand more different cases. And you can't simply paint all with a single brush. You can't say a cult is a cult is a cult because there are differences between cults, how they operate, how far they go, and uh, their methods. And you might consider this to be minutiae, but to me it is something quite important to note. Yes, you can call a group a cult, that group a cult, a series of organisations, cults, but we mean different things. 
Is it a dangerous cult? Potentially dangerous, sometimes harmful, manipulative, greedy, controlling, exploitative, etc. You know, what, what type of organisation is it really? Rather than simply being described by a simple four-letter word, and I'm sure there are other simple four-letter words which could be applicable in some cases, but yes, we do have to be clear. Otherwise, the idea of describing something as being a cult or being cult-like is... Well, it's clear as mud.